so in this lecture we are going to see method to find particular integral if the differential equation involving involving sin ax plus b or cos ax plus b okay so let us see how to use this thing now so let me write let fd be a polynomial f of t equal to d raised to n plus b1 d raised to n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus bn minus 1 d plus bn what are these bi's these bi's are your real numbers okay now what uh, will be now what will be f of d square let me write what is so i will just replace d by d square okay so what is f of d square so if now why am i replacing d by d square that i'll come to you later so wherever there is a d i will just replace it by d square okay so this will mean it is d square raised to n plus b1 d square raised to n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus bn minus 1 writing this term okay bn minus 1 d square plus b naught okay I will call this a one. Now we will find out what is D of what is D of cos AX. D of cos X AX means the derivative of cos AX. derivative of cos x is minus a sin ax what is the derivative d square of cos ax the derivative of the derivative the already the derivative is minus a sin x is car derivative what will be the derivative of this it will be plus a square a with a and minus and, and sin x car derivative will be minus uh, sin x is cos x sorry so let me write it as minus will be there this will be cos x what is d cube cos x and that minus will become a plus sign plus a cube sin ax higher power fourth ax will be what a raised to four cos ax okay now when i observe these things what i see is that d square this a raised to 4 okay how can i write this uh, a raised to 4 as is there any way that i can write a raised to 4 is this see the thing is that here there is a cos and here also there is a cos here there is a cos 
and here also there is a pause so it means that i will pay attention at these two people i will not pay attention at the first and the third one because cos has become sin and here also cos has become sin so i will not pay attention at the first and the third thing and this a raised to 4 can be written as what it can be written as minus a square the square cos a okay okay now what is why am i doing all this stuff now let me write what is f of d square again by equation one what have we done by one by one f of d square is equal to d square raised to n plus b1 d square raised to n minus 1 plus dot dot plus bn minus 1 d square plus bn therefore f of d square cos ax is equal to now multiplying cos x to all of them okay d square raised to n cos ax plus b1 d square raised to n minus 1 cos ax plus blah 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 b n minus 1 d square cos ax plus b n cos ax which is equal to let me write in the reverse fashion again now what is b n cos a n x so that term will be as it is plus bn minus 1 what is d square cos ax this calculation we have done d square cos ax is minus sorry is minus a square cos ax minus a square cos ax remember it is not minus a square it is not this it is a square with the minus sign it is not minus a the whole square then a previous term now the previous term will be having a d raised to 4 correct bn bn minus 1 bn minus 2 cos ax because all because all these terms were replaced by d square so you'll have all powers of d square d square d raised to 4 d raised to 2 n minus n minus 1 d raised to 2 d square is to n what is d raised to 4 cos x so d raised to 4 cos x is minus a square the whole square cos ax it is minus a square now there is a whole square cos ax plus what will you get here p1 d square has been replaced see look here carefully in this step if you look at this step d square has been just replaced by what minus a square so when i'm writing for b1 what will i get here this person will be replaced by minus a square 
raised to this d square is going to be replaced by minus a square cos x and what about this minus a square raised to n cos ax and then again I will pull out the cos ax I use the cos x and pulling out the cos x back so what will I get minus a square raised to n plus b1 minus a square raised to n minus 1 plus minus a square square plus I forgot uh, here I forgot b n minus 2 sorry plus b n minus 1 minus a square plus b n and who is the term in the square nothing but f what was d square replaced by d square was replaced by what a square with the minus sign so this is nothing but minus of a square cos ax right where d square is just replaced by minus a square in one look at equation one wherever there is d square that has been replaced by minus of a square correct so this is nothing but that is nothing but f of minus a square i'll again repeat it is not minus a the whole square take a number square it and then put a minus sign which is called minus a square now what is the conclusion of this so when I look at the left hand side and right hand side what have I got I started with this f of d square equal to cos x and I have ended it with that it is equal to f of minus a square cos a so let me write it down therefore we conclude f of d square is equal to f of minus a square cos ax and again the same trick that we did in the exponential thing operate 1 upon f d square both sides operate 1 upon f d square so I will get both sides okay which is 1 upon f d square f d square I'm sorry I forgot here to write cos ax cos ax is equal to 1 upon f d square f of minus a square cos ax what is a 1 upon f d square and f d square so that integral and differential operator will cancel each other and you'll get cos ax is equal to this is a constant so it is it will come out of the integral so this comes out to is f of minus a square 1 upon f d square cos a x and this 1 upon f of minus a square I will push down the left hand side but it should not be equal to zero same it's same like the case one if f of minus a square is not equal to zero then i will push it to the left hand side that constant which is one upon f of minus a square cos ax is equal to one upon 
f of d square cos a. So this means that I have got a formula from this. What is the formula? The formula is that one upon f d square cos a x is nothing but one upon just replace the d square by a square with the minus sign. Cos and keep cos x as cos x. Do you remember what was the formula for e raised to ax? The formula for e raised to ax was 1 upon fd. e raised to ax was what? The d was replaced by a, which is 1 upon f of a. e raised to ax. Again, e raised to ax. Here also you will get again cos x. So only here, instead of replacing d, we are going to replace what? We are going to replace d square. By which quantity? By negative of a square. Okay, so on similar lines, on similar lines, 1 upon f d square sin a x is also going to be the same thing, 1 upon f of minus of a square sin a x. So it is going to be the same thing both have the condition what is the condition here that f of a f of that minus a square should not be equal to zero if i replace this cos ax by one upon fd square replace this cos ax by like this cos ax plus b if some constant is added no difference in the derivation Similarly, you will get this is also f of minus a square cos a x plus b. So cos remains cos. Okay. If I take sine a x plus b, then same thing. One upon f d square sine a x plus b is also equal to. One upon f of minus a square sine a x plus b. The condition is same that f of minus a square should not be equal to zero. Okay. So this formula, basically these two formulas, the basic two formulas, I'm going to use this in problems now. So this means that for solving problems, the right hand side must be either sine ax or either cos ax. Okay. It cannot be anything apart from sine ax and cos ax. Right now, we know that when we were actually solving problems of exponential, we gave the formula for a raised to ax, but because of that, we could also solve formulas problems which have a raised to x. We could also solve problems which were having constants on the right hand side we could also solve problems which were having sine hyperbolic x cos hyperbolic x right so if you know the formula for this you can always use uh, you can always derive the formula for these people right so if i know the formula for sine ax and if i know the formula of cos ax okay we have basic two formulas for sine x and cos x can I write, can I solve the problem if the right hand side is sine square x or if the right hand side is cos cube x or if the right hand side is sine 2x cos 3x product. I know the formula for this. I know the formula for this. Then how am I going to solve the problems which are involving these particular things? Okay, so let us try to note. Let me write a note. Note. First, we all know these things. Let us write it once more. What is sine square x? Sine square x is 1 minus cos 2x by 2. What is cos square x? When x is 1 plus cos 2x by 2.
the sign cube x what is cos cube x it's 3 sin a sin x minus sin 3x by 4 you must have learned this in some different format i'm writing in the i'm writing sin cube and cos cube but here it is the addition of causes 3 cos 6 plus cos 3x divided by 4 do you understand what is the importance of these formulas sin square is expressed in terms of cos ax cos square is expressed in terms of cos ax here sin cube is expressed in terms of sin 1x and sin 3x cos cube is expressed in terms of cos 1x and cos 3x okay, this is going to help me because i know the formula the above formula for only sin ax and cos ax right what about the product what will happen if the product come let me just recall those formulas again i know you people are very well versed in those formulas still i'll write it at sin a cos b then you have cos a cos b minus sin a. we are going to we are writing this because we want a quick reference minus sin a sin b what is this the sine cos and cos then a plus b it's your skill how to remember this formulas i will write the formulas for my reference plus plus and a minus again sine cos cos a plus a minus b a minus b a minus b that is already a minus sign here okay so these three formulas will also help me in writing the answers for example i want to write what is sin x cos 2x this will help me writing this is sin 3x plus sine of minus x what is sine of minus x minus sin x so what has happened product of two functions has become sine ax sine 3x and sine 1x so i can use the formula above formula again these set of formulas will always help you in integration also because you know the integration of sine ax and cos ax right and those two integrations when you know the formulas of these two integrals you can use these above three sets of formulas and find the integration of any term in integration which is having a power of sine or cos product of sine and cos these five things will always help you five six things okay now let us take a problem d square plus 2 y is equal to cos 3x solution what is fm equal to we know we are not basically looking at complementary functions because they are easy m square plus 2 is 0 so m is equal to plus or minus square root 2 i so this means that yc is c1 cos root 2 x plus c2 sin root 2 x what is yp yp is 1 upon f t right hand side is cos 3 x which is equal to 1 upon d square plus 2 correct d square plus 2 cos 3x
and what is my formula? My formula says I'll write it in the corner. And upon f d square cos a x gets replaced by what? f of minus a square cos a x. So what is a here? a is this. So what is a square 9? What is minus a square? Minus 9. Means d square will get replaced by minus 9, not minus 3 whole square. Many students make a mistake here. They say that d square gets replaced by minus 3 square and then that becomes 9. And then replace, they replace d square by 9, which is not correct. It should be replaced by negative of the square. So it is minus 9. So it is equal to yp is equal to upon minus 9 plus 2 cos 3x which is minus 1 by 7 cos 3x this will be your yp so the next question is solve dq plus 4d y equal to 6 sin x. So the solution is this right to auxiliary equation if m is equal to m cube plus 4m equal to 0. So m is equal m into m square plus 4 plus 0. So in m is equal to 0 m square plus 4 equal to 0 will give m is equal to plus minus 2i so we have three roots so complementary function will be c1 e raised to 0x plus c2 cos 2x plus c3 sin 2x e raised to 0x is 1 so i will erase e raised to 0x yp is 1 upon dq plus 4d six sin x now we know that for sin x and cos x we need a d square is a d square available here so i'll say okay let me pull out d common so i'll get d square plus 4 into 6 6 can come out of the integration so that's 6 into sine 1 x so here a is 1 this means a square will be 1 and minus a square will be minus 1 so d square is going to be replaced by minus 1. Who is going to be replaced by minus 1? Only d square. Nothing is told about d. So I will keep d as it is. 6 1 upon d 1 upon minus 1 plus 4. So this d square is replaced by what? Minus 1. Sin x This constant will come out of the integration. So 6 upon 3 will go. This will be 1 upon d and sin x will get stuck in the integration. What is 1 over d? We know that 1 over d is integration. Integration of sin x is minus cos x. 2 cos x. 2 minus sin. This will be a yp. Okay, very easy. Let me go on one or two problems more. Right, solve d2y by dx square minus 4 dy by dx plus 4 
y equal to sin 2x. Solution. The auxiliary equation, same square minus 4m plus 4 equal to 0. So which is m is equal to 2 comma 2, the roots are 2 comma 2. So the complementary function will be c1 e raised to 2x repeated plus c2 x e raised to 2x. So we go for yp which is 1 upon d square minus 4d plus 4 sin 2x. Right hand side may sin 2x. Hai. Again, your a is 2. So a square is 4. So minus a square is minus 4. So d square will be replaced by minus 4. This means 1 upon minus 4 plus minus 4 minus 4d plus 4 sin 2x minus 1 upon 4 into 1 upon d because only this 1 upon 4d remains sin 2x which is integration you have to only remember the integration of sin and cos in this problem sin 2x just minus cos divided by 2 so it is 1 by 8 cos 2x this will be your particular integral let me move to one more problem now sometimes in both of above problems what has happened is we have got a stage where 1 upon d comes right here also and we can simply replace that 1 by d by but not always okay let's see that problem now then how to handle the case d cube minus 3d square plus 9d minus 27y equal to cos 2x okay clearly you see that all these are powers of 3 if you just guess m equal to 3 is root of this equation m cube minus 3m square plus 9m minus 27 so m equal to 3 is the root the other two roots i will use by other roots by I will factorize it and by go by synthetic division and those roots you will get to be complex so I will directly write down the answer now so the factorization is basically m minus 3 into I guess it should be m square plus 9 I think this should be the answer the m cube minus 3 m square plus 9 m minus 27 which is this so m is equal to plus minus 3 i so the three roots are m equal to plus minus 3 i and one root is m equal to 3 so the complementary function y c is equal to
okay so i'm sorry so let us continue so y c is equal to c1 e raised to 3x plus c2 cos 3x plus c3 sin 3x okay let's go ahead now now y p is equal to 1 upon f d what is the right hand side is uh, cos 2x right this is the right hand side which is equal to 1 upon f d what is f d f d is d cube minus 3d square plus 90 minus 20 i will not write it in the entire thing i will write the factorization because i know the factorization the factorization is d minus 3 into d square plus 9 so whatever can be simplified we will simplify cos 2x what is the value of a here a is 2 so a square is 4 so minus a square is minus 4 so d square will be replaced by minus 4 wherever there is d square either there is no d square so i'll keep it as it is minus 4 plus 9 cos 2x which is equal to 1 or 5 will come out the integration and 1 minus d1 upon d minus 3 cos 2x now how to proceed because there is no d square if there is no d square okay there are two ways to do bring d square in the picture now which way is correct you people should tell me so i can say that let me multiply and divide by d if i do this thing you'll get one upon don't write this okay don't write this component we're understanding what are we trying to do one over five d upon d square minus 3d cos 2s but again here d square will be replaced by what minus four so ye nickel jayega this is uh, upper wala d is as it is this is minus four minus 3d again a d comes now that d is also stuck jaise ye d i could not replace again after doing multiplication and division by d i get a 3d there is no d square in the denominator so this multiplying and dividing by d is not a good idea now i want to bring a power of d i want to bring d square without bringing the d a single d so in the denominator we are not care taking care of numerator right now numerator is very easy so i will not worry about the numerator so what i will do is i will multiply it by the conjugate of that now what is the conjugate of d minus 3 conjugate is d plus 3 and downstairs i will have d square minus 9 because d plus 3 into d minus 3 is i will write that step for the first time i'm teaching you d plus 3 into d minus 3 cos 2x which is equal to 1 over 5 d plus 3 upon d square minus 9 cos 2x and now d square can be replaced by 4 because again a is 2 so d square can be replaced by minus 4 this will become 1 over 5 d plus 3 minus 4 minus 9 cos 2x which is equal to 1 over 5 multiplied by 1 over minus 13 d plus 3 cos 2x what is this how to have all this this is also not very easy it is not very difficult this is minus 1 over 65 d cos x d cos 2x plus 3 cos 2x what is d means d is nothing but the derivative which is minus 2 sin 2x and this is as it is 3 cos 2x so this will be the complete answer i hope it is now understood let me take one more problem. Solve t square plus 2d 
plus 1y equal to sine 2x. The roots of auxiliary equation are m square plus 2m plus 1 is 0. So m is equal to minus 1 minus 1. Repeated roots. See, I'm going for the complementary function now. Very fast. Plus c2 x e raised to minus x. Y p is of our main interest, which is 1 upon d square plus 2d plus 1 sine 2x which means that a is 2, a square is 4, minus a square is minus 4. So it is equal to 1 upon minus 4 plus 2d plus 1 sine 2x, which is 2d minus 3 sine 2x. Again, I'm stuck with a D and I know what I will do is multiply and divide by the conjugate 2D plus 3 upon 2D minus 3 into 2D plus 3. I hope you understand why am I multiplying by a conjugate because there is no D square available. Sine 2X which is 2d plus 3 upon 4d square minus 9 sine 2x d square now can be replaced by minus 4 which is 2d plus 3 upon minus 16 minus 9 sine 2x which is minus 1 over 25 2d plus 3 sine 2x. This sine 2x will multiply to both of them, which is minus 1 over 25. 2d sine 2x plus 3 sine 2x. The derivative of sine 2x is. 2 cos 2x. The problem is solved. Okay. Now what will happen if instead of uh, getting a sine and a cos? Right. Sometimes we may not get only see all the problems above. We have taken all sine 2x, cos 2x, right hand side were very simple. Correct. So what will I do if the right hand side turns out to be something like sine square x? Let me take a simple example. D square plus 1y equal to take sine square x. I have already given you the formula of sine square, cos square, sine cube, cos cube, sine a cos b, cos a cos b and sine a sine b. So any of these will be handled in the similar fashion that I'm going to do for sine square. So solution is auxiliary equation is m square plus 1 equal to 0 which is m is equal to plus minus i and therefore this complementary function is c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. For the particular integral 1 upon d square plus 1 sin square x. Now I know what is sin square x equal to. So I'm going to write it as d square plus 1 sin square x is 1 minus cos 2x. Half will come out the integration. It has nothing to do with an integral sign. Integral of 1 minus cos 2x. Which is integral of this 
half common which is integral of 1 minus integral of cos 2x which is half here a is 2 so a square is 4 so minus a square is minus 4 d square will be replaced by minus 4 this i will keep pending wait for a whole hold for a moment plus minus 1 upon d square is replaced by minus 4 plus 1 cos 2x and this is nothing but plus 1 over 3 cos 2x eventually What is this? This I know it's a constant. And constant can be written as e raised to 0x. So 1 upon d squared plus 1 e raised to 0x. And what does the method say for uh, now first case? We are in the first case. It says that just replace d by a. d by a. Who is a here? Here a is 0. So just replace d by 0. If you replace d by 0, what will I get? 1 upon 0 plus 1. So it is just 1. So it is half 1 plus 1 by 3 cos 2x. Okay. So in the second uh, part of this lecture, we will do an important theorem. We want to find the formula for 1 upon t square plus a square cos ax. We want to find the formula for this and we also want to find the formula for 1 upon d square plus a square sine ax. Okay, and then we will see where this formula will be used how this we formula we are going to use so let so keep this uh, thing for the time being keep this blank let us see what is the way to find these two quantities so proof so what we know we know two things so we know first thing is e raised to i a x is what is e raised to i theta e raised to i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta so e power i a x is cos a x plus i sin a x so this is e power this is called as Euler's formula So, second thing, what is the second thing? Second thing is that factorization of factorization x square plus y square. What is factorization of x square plus y square? In complex factors, we will try to find x squared plus y squared is x plus i y into x minus i y. These are the two things we will be using in this particular theorem. Okay, so now let us write. So see, remember, I want to find these two formulas. So consider. one upon d square plus a square cos ax now here i say that d square so a is here a so d square is to be replaced by a square with a minus sign 
right? This is our previous theorem, the theorem that we did above. What is that? If d square cos ax will be what? d square will be replaced by minus a square. So f of minus of a square cos x. So that if I do this here, then what will happen? Then the denominator will become zero. So this will mean that this will be a case of failure. So denominator here is becoming zero. So basically this is nothing but case of failure for sine ax and cos ax. So this is the theorem for what? Case of failure. For which people? Sine ax and cos ax. So we are learning what happens, what to write here if I'm getting if I'm getting into this particular problem. Fine. So now I will consider instead of d cos ax, I will consider now e power i ax because e power i ax contains what cos as well as sine. So both our problems that we are struggling to find these quantities. We will get the answers of these at the same time. OK. So now what is this equal to now? This d squared plus a square can be factorized. So if I factorize that. What is the factorization d squared plus a square? D plus i a. Into d minus a e is to i a x and this means that i can use the type 1 problems what was type 1 type 1 was for e raised to ax people right remember that what is type 1 fd e raised to ax is equal to 1 upon f of a e raised to so d will be replaced by what a a simply in this formula so in this situation that we are running now we will replace the d by what we replace the d by i if i replace the d by i a what will happen this will become i a plus i a and here there will be a case of failure. So let me write one upon i plus so i and let me write it plus one upon d minus i a and e raised to i a x and let me write here case of failure. So in the case of failure for sin a x and cos a x, I am again coming with the case of failure of e raised to ax. Now, what was the case of failure for? If fd is this, okay, and if I have a case of failure, then we used to write the factor is d minus a into gd e power ax. Or case of failure, okay, time we write this as one upon ga. If you can do anything, you will write it as it is. So this is what we have done. See, this is your GD. And this is have this is a problematic person like D minus saying. So GA we have substituted. So we have done this part. No, only A is replaced by what? IA. Okay. So and what happens to this? This person goes away whenever I have that and I just insert what? I insert x. If it is coming r times, if that problem is coming r times, I will replace r upon raise to r upon r factor. But this problem of becoming zero in the denominator is coming only once. So it will be x raised to one upon one factorial. So this means I have to just multiply it by x, right? So here r is equal to one. Wow, who is r? R is the power of which term of the term d minus 
i and that is coming only once so which is equal to 1 upon 2 i a x e raised to x raised to 1 upon 1 factor let me write it x raised to 1 upon 1 factor so that you will remember which formula are we talking about okay into e raised to i a x okay which is further equal to x upon 2a and 1 upon i is nothing but minus i correct because i know that i square is how much i square is minus 1 Never i is equal to minus 1 over i and therefore minus i is nothing but 1 over i okay so that's why 1 upon i can be replaced by minus i so minus i e raised to i a x which is equal to x upon 2a minus i cos ax plus i sin ax which is equal to x upon 2a cos ax with a minus sign imaginary i square is minus 1 and minus 1 minus 1 become plus i square has become minus 1 that is why this plus sign will come x upon 2a sine ax what have i done i have basically done imaginary part and this is the real part and what was the left hand side what was the left hand side here pe kaun tha? who was this this was 1 upon d square plus a square e raised to i a x okay means it is 1 upon d square plus a square so lhs this is my lhs this is my rhs so we get that 1 upon d square plus a square say so for lhs equal to rhs gives 1 upon d square plus a square cos ax plus i sin ax this was the lhs correct e raised to i ax means cos is equal to minus so what is the real part let me write the real part the real part is x upon 2a sin ax plus what is the imaginary part the imaginary part is minus x upon 2a cos ax and therefore comparing real and imaginary part i hope you got the answers now comparing real and imaginary parts what is left hand side 1 upon d square plus a square cos ax is equal to x upon 2a sin ax and the imaginary part is 1 upon d square plus a square sin ax is equal to minus x upon 2a cos ax and says that it is cos ax is equal to x upon 2a sin ax 
this is minus x sub 1 to a cos ax. Now let us go to a problem. solve d2y by dx square plus y is equal to sin x very simple equation solution auxiliary equation is m square plus 1 equal to 0 so m is equal to plus minus i and therefore the complementary function is c1 cos x plus c2 sin x what is the yp is 1 upon fd into right hand side is sin x what is fd fd is d square plus 1 y to sin x which is 1 upon d square plus 1 sine 1x one so here a is 1 therefore a square is also 1 minus a square is minus 1 so a square so d square should be replaced by minus 1 and then i understand that oh if i put here minus 1 i will get the case of failure okay so this is the case of failure Therefore, we must use the formulas for case of failures. What is the formula for case of failure? The formula says that 1 upon b square plus a square sin ax is equal to minus x upon, sorry, x upon 2a. It's minus, yes, cos ax integral of sin is minus cos but what is value of a a is 1 so it is minus x upon 2 cos x this will be your particular integral let me go for one more problem D squared to 4 minus 1 y is equal to cos x. Fm auxiliary equation Fm is equal to m power 4 minus 1, which is m power 2 minus 1, m squared minus 1 m2 squared plus 1 the m is equal to m is equal to z 1 minus 1 i and uh, minus i so complementary function will be c1 e power 1 x plus c2 e power minus x plus e power 0 x cos c3 cos beta is 1 alpha is also 1 complex roots plus c4 sin x what is yp yp is 1 over d power 4 minus 1 sin x so formula says that if a is equal to 1 a is 1 so a square is minus 1 so d square will be replaced by minus a square which is minus 1 okay so d square is replaced by minus 1 therefore d raised to 4 will be replaced by what minus 1 square dono ka square kya if i square both sides 
So d raised to 4 will be replaced by 1. If I d raised to 4 is replaced by 1, then I understand it denominator becomes 0. So it is case of failure. So this is case of failure. Means I must factorize the denominator. So factorize and why factorize the denominator? Because I want to know who exactly is causing problem. Okay, which person is exactly causing the problem? What is factorization of one upon d raised to four? What did you write? This m square plus one into m square minus one. So it is d square plus one into d square minus one. Cos right? Sine of cos. Cause one x and therefore d square is to be replaced by what d square is to be replaced by minus one. Which person survives in this? If I put d square equal to minus one, here there is a problem, but here there is no problem, so that I will simplify one upon minus one minus 1 into I'm writing this uh, I'm showing an arrow here and this person is problematic so I'll keep that aside whatever is problematic will be left and this is cause one x minus half okay. one upon d square plus 1 cos 1x and I realize that this exactly is the case of failure because this is d square plus a square it is of the format cos ax d square plus 1 square cos 1x right this is the exact person who was causing the problem so this is case of failure And what is the formula for d squared plus a square? One over d squared plus a square cos ax is x upon 2a sin ax. So cos becomes sine minus half x upon 2 into a. a is 1. Sin 1x. So the solution finally is minus x over 4 sin x. This becomes your yp. t square plus 1 y is equal to cos cube x plus e raised to x. This is again easy. So, auxiliary equation is m square plus 1 equal to 0 so m is equal to plus minus i so y c is c1 cos x plus c2 sine so yp is 1 upon d square plus 1 cos cube x plus c power x which is integral of this plus integral of this This part A is 1. So D can be replaced by A. So this is of type 1, correct? This is of type 1. So 1 upon FD e power AX is equal to 1 upon FA. In this type 1, remember there is no D square needed. D is directly replaced by A. So this will be 1 upon 1 plus 1 power x will be half a power x. So this is easy. What about this? 1 d square plus 1 cos cube is nothing but cos 3x plus cos x. 
3 cos x upon 4 which is 1 upon 4 integral of this plus integral of this d 1 upon d square plus 1 cos 3x plus 1 upon 4 3 is also out of integration 1 upon d square plus 1 cos x plus this okay which is equal to 1 upon 4 in the first part a is 3 a square is 9 so minus a square is minus 9 so d square will be replaced by minus 9 in the first part 1 upon minus 9 plus 1 cos remains cos plus 3 upon 4 3 upon 4 in this part a is 1 so a square is minus a square is also 1 now minus a square is minus 1 now d square is just over replaced by minus 1 and this is case of failure correct so what is the case of failure for cos it is this x upon 2a not a minus sign is it right sign a plus the last person was half e power x please check this sign huh? i hope i'm correct it is x upon 2 and not minus x upon just check that it is 1 upon 4 1 upon minus 8 you can simplify this cos x plus 3 upon 8 x is sin x plus half e power x 